today is a mucky job, but it's one that needs to be done. So let's do it. I picked up this kit from Lanogard. There's a link in the description if you want one too. Inside the kit, you get a couple liters of the Moto spray, the spray applicator, and another spray bottle, I don't know what that's for, the motor grease for the high corrosion areas, and some directions and info, cool Land Rover, and the 360 spray applicator for inside the chassis and the difficult to reach places. The instructions are very clear, so I guess I need to pressure wash first. <laughs> Okay, that's all done. Still got wet sleeves, gross. But I have to let this dry before I can apply the Lano Guard to it. So I don't know if I'm gonna to get to that today, unfortunately. The weather's like sunny, rainy, sunny. It's just, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna dry. But I have some other little bits and pieces that I can fit, which I can do now. I picked up a bunch of really affordable replacement parts from lrparts.net. Things my Land Rover desperately needed, like new wingtop vents. The old ones were broken and looked terrible. And it's an easy fix. I also got a new gear lever knob and a new high low range gear knob as the old ones definitely needed replacing. Lastly I bought some replacement felt for the sliding windows. You know, the ones that always rattle. But I thought we could start with the wing top vents. After opening up the vent, I could see that it was full of gunk and water, so I had to remove the rubber bung, let it drain, clean it out, and then replace that rubber bung. Now that is totally unsafe and pretty much unacceptable. But this is what Land Rovers turn into if you don't look after them, or look after them badly. But thankfully it's a really easy fix and not expensive at all, unless you get the billet aluminium ones. Cha-ching! Since it threads on, it's tricky to get it tight and perfectly lined up at the same time. So a little trick is to put a bit of rubber, or in this case some foam flooring, in the gear knob so that when you tighten down on it, it creates some cushiony resistance and lets you line the gear knob up perfectly and get it tight at the same time. The high-low gear knob already has a rubber bung in it, 
So it's just a matter of screwing it on until it's tight and lined up. Now these sliding side windows on the county station wagon version of the Defender are notorious for rattling with age. I've even had to wedge mine with a bit of paper to stop it from driving me mad. But again, it's an easy and cheap fix. Shout out to Britannica Restorations on YouTube as this is where I learned how to replace them. Firstly, you need to remove the old felt, often bits and pieces. It's about 10 bucks per window. And what you do is pinch the felt in half and slide it into the channel. Remember to keep the end bit out of the channel. You'll be using this as a tab to pull on. Then slide the window into the new felt section before holding the felt tab and pulling the felt at the same time as sliding the window backwards. You keep feeding it through like this until the felt fits nicely all around the channel. Once it's in at the front of the window, you can work the rest of the tab backwards into the remaining bit of channel. These windows will eventually be replaced by some gullwing windows from Explore Glazing, but for now there's no more rattling. Alright, today's the day. We're gonna lano guard this thing up underneath. I spray washed it the other day. Oh my gosh! and uh, it's been a couple of days, but we have had a lot of rain, so it's kind of rained around the car and splashed up underneath. So it's a bit dusty, but I think it's dry. Now, I've got the Lanagard spray and the Lanagard grease heating up in a pot of water just down there. And then we're gonna, I think I'll do the grease first on all the difficult bits. Very vulnerable, high to corrosion, seizing up such as weld seams, nuts, bolts, pins, sharp edges. Recommend heating the grease in a pot of hot water and brushing it on with the paintbrush. Then the Lanagard spray, give it a good shake. Use this to go over the big white areas. And then the 360 spray applicator will go in all the nooks and crannies in the holes of the chassis and places that you can't get this or this. It's very well thought out because sometimes, mostly, corrosion starts from the inside out. So let's do it before so we can see what happens after. Right, well let's give you a little bit of a before. Let's go underneath here. You can see very clearly. Let's have a look. I mean, this chassis is in pretty good condition. Uh, to be fair. Okay, here is starting to... It's not flaky, it's just a little bit of surface rust and a bit of African dirt. It looks pretty good. It should look incredible after it's been lano guarded. It all needs a little bit of lano guard love. Oh, that's the bottom of the footwell. That's looking a bit funky. So I think I'll get a, a wire brush in there. Okay, first up, very civilized, is the motor grease. Like, oh, it even smells like sheep. Looks like honey. Okay, that's the end of that brush. Okay, committed. All right, let me. Okay, we're in. Let's just start. A good applicator. Okay. 
go. That's pretty good. I guess it's just a matter of keep on going. Sheesh, what a messy job. Okay, next, I'm gonna put the 360 wand into uh, some of the chassis holes. I think you take this off. Let me screw that on. Get off. Oh, there it comes. What I also do in there. See, this is where the it's the supports for the rear sort of tub. But the rest of it is looking great, nice, full, shiny coated Leno guard. Looks great. No, I lost me end. So that was the prep and the application. It goes on pretty well, apart from the little 360 wand. This tip that sprays 360, I put it into the chassis, sprayed, and it just went pop, and it shot off, and so now it lives inside the chassis of that car. It could have been my fault. Uh, probably was, to be honest. But the rest of it was okay. Um, I tell you, my lips feel amazing from all of the back spray. I think it's linoleum is the one of the main ingredients I don't know but my lips feel fantastic and soft yeah but anyway the product seems great it goes on really 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 well now I've got to let it cure for a few days and I, apparently it goes like a sort of a satiny sheeny black and the water is just gonna bead off of it so I'll check back in with you in a couple of days to show you when it's cured and there you have it after a few days it's turned to a silky satiny black ready to repel all the water and grit and salt from the winter roads over the next few months. I think this Defender now is ready for the winter. I reckon this probably only needs to be applied maybe once a year. I'm confident that it's going to be a lifesaver for this Defender. So, if you would like to pick up a kit, they're really not expensive. I think it's a hundred bucks, you get two liters. I still have about a quarter of it left after applying to a 110, you know, so it's probably enough for a, you know, a 130 double cab or, or something like that. Still got tons of this grease left, so, you know, I could, if I see a little patch over time, but I can just reapply. I'm stoked, I'm happy. Uh, there is a referral link in the description where you can click on and grab yourself a kit and make sure that your Defender or your 4x4 will continue to go on for the next however many years. Thanks again for watching and please be sure to subscribe for more videos.